today is all about jackets with hoods. They could be lined, unlined. And today you'll see three ways that you can finish these and make your garments look a little bit elevated. Sewing techniques that you can also do and I'm showing you in detail. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. Today's video is going to build on another video I filmed a little while ago for you showing you how to sew a jacket that has a separating zipper, a collar and hemband. This is a type of style that you'll find in a lot of brands. Lots of jacket patterns have this feature and the way that you sew your separating zipper into your collar and into your hemband could be very very similar. So that is shown in a lot of detail and also with some extra tricks that can elevate the way that your garment looks inside like covering the inside of your zipper tape with twill tape in my case i made a linen binding that is cut on the straight of grain i also showed you a really really cool way to finish your hemband that could be super fast and easy with a burrito method not seen in pattern instructions usually but it works amazingly so if you go and look at that video you'll be able to make any jacket pattern you want very very well if you just learn the technique you won't even have to think about it next time you have a jacket like that you can just go and whip it up so today we're building on that because on the previous video that was all about patterns that have a collar right so that's all good let's swap out that collar for a hood this time so in patterns you'll see different types of hoods. Some go a little bit taller and include a portion of the zipper in there. Others the zipper will just reach the neckline and then your hood is just going to start on its own like that. You can find hoods that have only two pieces and you just have a center seam. Other hoods will have lateral pieces and a center piece right there. Those things about the shape and the way you actually put the hood together don't really make much of a difference in the way that you actually sew the hood onto the neckline there, which is usually just around neckline, right? So we're gonna see a lot of options today. I'm really, really excited to share this content with you because I think it's pretty unique. You won't see this content around and it'll really, really elevate the way that your garments look inside. You'll be super proud. I'm really happy to share this with you. I mean, my backyard, if you see red dots behind me, it's these little fruits called acerolas. They look a lot like cherries, but they are not cherries at all. Look at this. So, so nice. We make juice out of this and the vitamin C content is so good. Spring is here. Now, one way to sew in your hood that is lined, I have not included in the sewing footage here, but it's what you would usually do. And it's very similar to what I did with my collar in the previous video, is that you basically sew your main hood to the neckline, right sides together. Then you sew this bit and then you sew on your lining. Your lining is just flopping around inside and what you do is fold the raw edge of the lining, fold it in by the seam allowance you're using and then you meet up the seam on the inside and top stitch all the way around. It can be really time consuming if you wanna do it really accurately. I mean, I take my time and I baste and, and hand sew that so that it's really neat. This edge of the collar, I've pressed it in by 3 eighths of an inch. Maybe your knit doesn't take pressing that well. In that case, just fold it. This specific fabric can press really well. And all we're gonna do is line this up there to that seam all along there and then top stitch it down and that'll finish the collar. There's the inner collar hand basted down, very neat. Now I'm just sewing this using a blind hem presser foot with a needle to the left that helps everything go super neatly. At the start where the zipper is, it's very bulky, so I have a long stitch length there. So that is one way, but another way that I'm going to show you here, it might or might not be in your pattern instructions, is to take your lining pieces, which are usually cut from the same pieces as your main hood pieces, and just trim away that seam allowance at the bottom, get rid of it. This will make your lining piece that much shorter, a little bit shorter, and you wrap the raw edge of that lining with bias tape made of, made of woven cotton. So let's see how to do that. It will give you a really, really nice finish. And this is the finish that the Constellation hoodie, the North Star pullover and the Navigator pullover uses from Love Notions. It's their collection of pullovers where they're all the same, but there's a version for women, men and for kids. So I have pulled that footage so you can see it here and have it as a reference of as one way that you can finish your hood inside when it's lined and it looks so so good let's see Don't you think this is to wear? all these pieces are for the hood 
The hood is made with a center panel that goes between the two main hoods and there are also lining pieces there. This hood has three pieces, these two are the ones that go on the side and there's a center panel there. From the top curve there's a notch and on this long piece, when you look at it, there are two notches above there. So that notch there matches that notch there and then on the other side the same and I've got the main one already pinned. You can see here the notch of the center panel and the notch of the hood and they match. This is the lining piece of the hood, it's already been sewn and on the bottom there's a raw edge there of this lining and the easiest way for me to finish the bottom is to just wrap my bias tape around it and just pin it there and just sew in one go. This is very easy to do with cotton bias tape. Sometimes uh, other types of bias tape you want to sew one side first, like the edge there, then flip it and then top stitch it. But I just think it's two steps that cotton tape doesn't really need. And you know if you just wrap it around and go once, it can still look nice and achieve the same result. How that looks super neat it's sewn on both sides so i'll just put the lining aside i've got the main hood right sides together with the neckline and i've matched it from the edge right there from the edge of this hood neckline there's a notch on the hood piece that matches the shoulder seam and then going along there's a notch on the neckline that matches the center panel on the hood same as there so it's super easy to put together this other shoulder seam matches that one so it's just super easy to put this hood piece to the neckline. After sewing that, the seam allowance needs to be trimmed to like an eighth of an inch. The seam is going to be finished at a later stage with the lining that I've just bound the edges from. So you really need this to have a tiny seam allowance and it will also reduce the bulk. I've opened the zipper so it's just hanging there. Now it needs to lie like that. It's the teeth need to go towards the side seams, you know. And then on top I have placed my lining hood there and I've lined it along all the edge there. The lining piece for the hood was cut the same way only that it's 3 8 of an inch shorter at the bottom here compared to that one there but when they go together here you can see that this bound edge is slightly longer than here so it's going to cover that seam there and so that just needs to be sewn there give it and then all along the top of the hood all along there to the other side there pivot and then there so if you're confused i'm just sewing along the top of the hood here the lining is there the main one is there they're right sides together So when you flip this, the top here is going to be super clean. Look at that from the right side. So you have the main piece there that goes up to the hood and it's enclosed in there. And now this just needs to be aligned there and cover the seam. Pin it all around the neckline there covering that seam and then that gets sewn and it closes off everything there on the top. Took the time and hand basted that piece to cover that seam there. So now when I sew, I can not worry about pins and just worry about stitching as straight as I can. Look how pretty that looks. It looks so pretty. So I find this way easier because you don't have to fold in anything inside of the lining. The edge is just clean because it's been wrapped with tape that is made out of woven and then you just align that to the seam and sew on top. You can see it covers that seam that you've already done. You do need to trim it shorter to make less bulk there and when you look at your hood inside it's so so pretty because it's got that binding. I personally would find something that matches 
you know, I wouldn't want to use Oxiden bias tape, for example, and have that shiny bit in there if it doesn't match the style of what I'm, whatever I'm sewing. I think cotton and linen are great choices for you to make that binding yourself. That binding could actually be cut on the straight of grain. It doesn't have to be cut on the bias because it's not an area that you need to stretch. Have a look at that technique if you've never done it before and give it a go. The second one is the one I did to sew my Donna jacket from 5 out of 4 patterns. This would be the latest video that you saw on my channel. I will link it down below. This particular jacket has a zipper that just reaches the neckline. The hood doesn't have zipper in it, it's just the hood. It's lined. You can also make the Donna jacket hood aligned, but I wanted to go the extra mile and use the lined option in the pattern. It's just that the way I'm sewing it is a little different because I'm using a burrito method. Very similar to what I've shown you that I did in the hem band in the other jacket sewing tutorial. This time I'm doing it in the hood, but this time is easier because the hood is a bigger piece. You can actually put your jacket in there with no problems. What you need to keep in mind though is that you need to leave the sleeves for the end. So let's go and see how to do it with the burrito method. It's so nice. I find it super fast, super easy, super neat on the outside, on the inside. You don't need to top stitch anything or hand baste anything. It's just great. So let's have a look. The other two hood pieces, I already put the grommet there on the main one, so that's ready for later. And this is the lining, I've sewn the curved seam on both of them, I've just used the serger. So now what I'm going to do is open these up like this and just put them right sides together. Join the seams there and all along the edge. And this is what I'm going to sew now, leaving the bottom edges raw like that. Once I've got the two layers sewn together, I'm going to sew the main hood onto the neckline but not the lining, the lining is going to be left just dangling loose. What I have here is the hood, right sides together with the neckline here. I've placed it along the edge right there. You would have your zipper teeth like that but you need to flip this because that's how the zipper is going to actually be and you can see the join of these two seams from the main hood and the lining this seam has to match this fold right there you can see that matches there and so when I sew I'm going to start sewing where that seam starts so all along the neckline the back and to the other side is the same I'm going to stop right there where that seam is and that seam is reaching the fold right there so it's a pretty simple seam and then we need, just need to deal with this and that's what I'm going to do a burrito roll. It's going to be much easier. Okay, so the main hood has been sewn, that's what we've just done, and the lining is still open like this. So this is where it gets really easy. What we need to do is roll up this jacket, and then we're going to take this and flip it and stuff the whole jacket inside like this until we get this lining hood to match the seam over here. So basically the whole jacket is inside. At the sewing table I'll tidy this up. But basically we need to start as close as we can to the edge there and then we sew across and at that end we leave a little gap so we can take the jacket out of here. This is the reason why I'm doing these burrito rolls without the sleeves on because it reduces the amount that you have to put in here. That's why I'm leaving the sleeves for the end. I'll just repeat what I've done. Okay, one way that could be easier to see is extend it like this, have the hood over here, get all that, roll it up, get your lining, put everything inside like that until you can meet the edges here of the neckline. This is the main hood, this is the lining, and the jacket is in, that, in there. Okay, so on this side, you see the seam right there, that's where I've already sewn, and 
from here i'm actually going to start sewing there remember i removed some zipper teeth there so i don't have the actual zipper teeth there i just have a bit of tape so i can start right there go along and then over here i'm going to leave a gap open that's where i'm going to pull the jacket through and then sew that little bit by hand but here it's the same see and this is so much faster i find i'm going to be sewing right on top of the seam that i've done before i can see it clearly because i've used a darker thread and this is different from when you do the burrito at the hem band because that's a smaller piece in this case the hood is big and so it's not a tight fit of a jacket in there so I think about two and a half inches without sewing is going to be okay for us to pull the jacket out through there you can see this opening so just tug gently here and start pulling the jacket out through this opening and then we sew that little bit by hand Okay, so on this side it's closed. You can see it's all neat there because I started from the very edge. But on this side where I had to pull the jacket through, it's still open right there. So I'm just going to needle this up, tuck it all in there, do a quick hand sew right here. No one's going to know. It'll be super neat and that will close up the hood on the top. Same way as I close this little section by hand, you can't tell. It's still super neat and you don't need to top stitch anything on the hem band or on the hood. What I am going to top stitch though is the center front just to keep this zipper flat and not have it be flipping out like this. Super fun process to put the jacket together. After finishing and closing this, then I can sew this for the casing that's going to hold the drawstring right there through that grommet. Of course at the end you need to leave a gap, two and a half to three inches is fine usually for you to start pulling your jacket out of there, bagging it out. It does take a little while to pull it out of there gently but it does come out and it's so beautiful. I think sewing that little bit by hand is totally totally worth it. It's way faster and much less work than if I wanted to do it the traditional method where I'm folding in the lining and meeting the seam and basting it so it's neat, you know. This is faster and it's so nice. I urge you to give it a go. If you do, please let me know how it went. I am just in love with this technique and I don't think I'll be sewing lined hoods in any other way from now on. <laughs> it's just so nice. Don't forget that the Donna jacket is still on sale this whole weekend. $6, that is 50% off. Find my affiliate link down below and if you want to see more about the jacket, check yesterday's video. I didn't include the burrito hood in that video. I put it in here to have it as a reference as a general technique for any pattern. The third technique I'm showing you is one I used with this Castillo cardigan from Itch to Stitch. And this is one way that you can finish a seam that unites the hood with the neckline when you're not doing a lined hood. You know, it might be the case that the wrong side of your fabric is really nice or you just want to keep it simple, but you, you never know what to do with that seam because when you wear your jacket open, you'll see that seam and if it's just surged, it doesn't look very nice. So there's a way that you can cover that with twill tape. If you have twill tape that is three eighths of an inch or half an inch wide, Go for it, use it. I know they sell them in a lot of colors. I have zero access to twill tape, so it's not something I can use. So I make my own replacement twill tape alternative that works just as well. And I'm quickly going to show you how to sew an unlined hood onto a neckline and finish that seam, cover it with a twill tape alternative. Although the technique will also work if you have twill tape. So let's go and see. This piece there is the hood. I've got both right sides together, both of the pieces, and there's just a curved seam to be sewn and surged. What I have here is the hood that I've already sewn, you know, that center seam of the hood and surged. And I've got the hood right sides together with the cardigan on the neckline. And then you just keep pinning all the way down to the edge. So you have raw edges here. It's not time to sew at all yet. Everything's just pinned and ready for the next step, which is using twill tape. Now, I've never had twill tape. I can't find it. I've looked for it everywhere. But basically, I need a strong type woven material that is not going to stretch. This is not bias tape. It's woven woven. This is a denim. And I know twill tape has a finished edge there. You know, there's nothing raw with twill tape. But my denim would have raw areas and I don't want fraying to happen and plus this is actually going to be seen. I've just cut a long strip according 
according to the size. I cut it an inch wide and put it through the Spice Tape Maker that has a 12 on the back, which means it's 12 millimeter wide or half an inch wide when it's finished with the double fold. In essence, this will be my twill tape. I'm just gonna mark the middle there with a chalk. Now, why the twill tape? This is a neckline that's made out of stretch fabric. If we just sewed that and left it, it this would start stretching out of shape. So this non-stretch material is going to stabilize this neckline and keep it the correct length. This is the inside. You can see all the seams of the sleeves. And I'm going to grab my twill tape and start pinning it right at the edge right there. And make sure the center there that I marked with chalk matches the center there that I've got with the pin of the neckline and that matches the center of the hood that's behind there. I've pinned the length of, of my replacement twill tape onto the neckline there. This is a stretchy fabric and you know, it depends how you've been manipulating. It might look longer than your twill tape, but that's the whole point of the twill tape to keep the length. And then when you wear your cardigan, your neckline not falling and slouching everywhere. So you need to make them match and I've done that. Now, if you had your typical twill tape, you would have the edge there and that's where you're gonna sew now on the edge. I'm using this, essentially it's the same. <laughs> now, depending on the thickness of your knit, this could get super bulky. Um, what I've done is increase my stitch length to 3.5. So that first step of the twill tape was sewn. In essence, we've stabilized the neckline and sewn the neckline to the hood. So it accomplishes a double thing. Now, there's seam allowance there that needs to be trimmed so that it's narrower than the twill tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that, um, grade this seam allowance down. Okay, you can see that there and the seam allowance has been trimmed to much smaller. Now I can pin this again up on the top edge of the twill tape that's hanging loose right now. You know, if you're using twill tape, good for you. You won't have to deal with what I had to deal with, but in essence, uh, the technique is the same. You'll just be sewing the top edge of your twill tape. This is gonna have a really nice finish. Look how sturdy this neckline's gonna be. It's not gonna stretch out of shape and become sloppy on your shoulders or anything. Now I'm just gonna go and do a straight stitch. happy with this and like when I wear this this is gonna be seen if I had twill tape I would probably have used the black type not the white type I hope this was helpful for you I really really hope it's helpful I know these videos are never popular but I always hope over time that these videos pick up with the views because I just want to share I just want to share these things that can make a really big difference to the way that you sew that can make it easier and just look nicer I'm really excited to share these things with you and I'm just smiling all the time. I'm preparing this content for you. So I really, really hope from the bottom of my heart that you enjoy it and that you put some of these things into practice. That is the goal of my channel. Limitless sewing. Don't worry if your pattern doesn't tell you to do it this way. You can always do it this way and give it a go. See what you like. And over time, you'll start building a little backup of techniques at the back of your mind that you can resort to when you see similar things in your patterns. Have a great weekend and I will see you soon with more sewing. Bye.